Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a Acer Tech based all-in-one cooler from XPG. This is the Levant 240mm ARGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video we'll be taking a look at the XPG Levant 240mm Acer Tech based all-in-one water cooling solution. This is a water cooling solution for pretty much most sockets on the AMD and the Intel side of things. So if you're looking for a water cooler with a fantastic warranty, then this is probably going to be worth a look. Now we'll be doing some installation on this and some testing to see what the results are like. Quickly we're going to do a quick unboxing, go through the packaging, see what we get. Then I'll do the installation, report back on how easy or how difficult it is to install. And of course the all-important temperature testing. So let's get straight into it. We should start by saying this has been sent to me free of charge for review purposes by XPG and they have not asked me to say anything, they've not given me any installation guide or anything like that, literally sent me the products and said, tell us what you think. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. So first of all, packaging wise, I like the packaging, XPG stuff generally comes through really nicely retail packaged and I think if you receive this as a gift, you'd be more than happy. Looking at some of the other main features, so addressable RGB LEDs as we've touched on, low noise fans, and this actually comes with the new version of the XPG fans, which we'll take a closer look at in a little bit. Comes with an all aluminium radiator, high quality low noise pump, and also a hassle free installation. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Moving around to the rest of the packaging, on the side we've got some information about the noise and fan profiles. The fan has an RPM range of 600 RPM up to 2000 RPM, plus or minus 10%, so I'd imagine it's going to be quite loud when it gets up to that upper range, but in normal use I think it's going to be absolutely silent. Moving around to this side of the box, you've got some more information of the specifications of it. So you've got the water block, the radiator and the fan. Obviously you can take a closer look at those if you want to pause the screen now. And also it goes into some depth about the actual measurements. So if you have any concerns whether this will fit into your case, then all the information is there. Essentially, because it is a small pump, then pretty much you're guaranteed 100% RAM compatibility. It shouldn't be any overspill as you would get with a traditional air cooler. So if you are considering putting lots of RAM in your system with particularly large heat sinks, then this should be absolutely fine. The radiator itself adheres pretty much to the standard 240 mil specs. So you're looking at 119 mils wide and 176 mils long. The fans themselves also adhere to pretty much the 120 mil spec, so 120 by 120 and they're 25 mils wide. Some of the other notable specs, as you can see on the side, so reliable high performance all-in-one cooling, Low noise fluid bearing, BWM with ARGB fans, ARGB lighting for the water block and fans, and a large surface 240mm all aluminum radiator. Hassle free installation, no additional setup required, and advanced fans ensure premium performance and increased durability. So, that sounds all pretty good on paper, but what's it actually like in the box? I have actually opened this a little bit just to see what's in there, so the, yeah, it is jumbled up a little bit, but essentially you get the uh, the idea of what you're going to get. So first of all we get our installation manual which I've had a quick flick through and it goes through in pretty good detail of all the individual components and also the layouts etc different types of settings for different types of platforms so we'll be looking at that a little bit later. You also get which is pretty common with XPG is the uh, sticker set and there's a QR code on the back to their be a hero section. Next up we've got some of our mounting hardware so these are extension cables for the addressable RGB and also there's some extension cables for the PWM. Next up is a bag with all of our fitting kit, so we'll take a, a little bit of a deeper dive into this and see what we've got. So you've got your backplate for AMD systems, you've got your mounting ring for AM4 and AM3, you've got your Intel mounting ring, specific AM4 bolts, and the rest of it is pretty much your generic fitting kit. So you've got some extra long screws there for mounting your fans and also some washers and screws for mounting the radiator. And in this section, you've got your thumb screws and also your risers. Next up, we've got the fans. Now the fans are actually quite weighty fans and they've got a rather unusual design to them. The actual fan blades themselves have got some uh, kind of veins, I guess you would call them, to direct airflow, it would seem. It'd be interesting to see how these actually perform whilst they're installed. These are the Vento based fans, so you can actually get these separately if you wanted to from XPG. So maybe you want to set up a whole system and have these as your case fans as well, then you can certainly do that. And again, these have got a PWM range of between 600 and 2000 RPM. Off of each one of the fans is a relatively short cable. 
one for addressable RGB and one for the PWM signal, and both have pass-throughs as well. So again, you can daisy chain these. Maybe there's gonna be a 360 mil in the future, uh, or maybe you wanna add more fans again in your case, you can hook them all up if you wanted to. Next up is the radiator and pump assembly. Now, the first thing I noticed straight away is the radiator is exceptionally light. It is an aluminum construction, so very, very lightweight indeed. And you've got these really nice braided hoses, which are really good. And they are attached to the pump head on a really nice swivel and they're very, very easy to move. So there's no real friction there. They do move quite easily. So again, depending on your setup, depending where you put your radiator, you should find it quite easy to flex the hoses around. And actually saying that, the hoses themselves are actually relatively short as well. So if you're considering mounting this maybe into the front of a case, do check the length of the hoses. I'll put some measurements on the screen now so you know exactly how long they are. I would say really this is perfectly suited for upper mounting in a case where it's gonna be relatively close to the actual pump head assembly itself. The pump head itself comes pre-applied with thermal goop. That's already on there, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's all pre-applied, which is nice. And you've got a machined brass or copper ring there, which actually doesn't appear to be machined particularly well. There are some machine marks on it. So if you wanted to, you could always buff it up and make it a little bit smoother, but it should be absolutely fine and shouldn't really detract from the performance. Moving around to the front of the pump head, and you've got the XPG logo, and you've got this triangle. Now all this is addressable RGB illuminated as well, if you wanted it to. And you can tell that because you've got two cables coming off. One is the three pin, five volt addressable RGB connection. And also you've got your three pin pump header. So let's take a closer look at the actual radiator itself. And actually it does appear to be in pretty good condition. Sometimes you get these sent through and some of the veins have actually been dented or marked, but actually this looks to be in particularly good condition. Doesn't seem to be any obvious markings on it, which is good. And it's finished in a really nice satin matte black finish. So testing wise, this is gonna go into a system with a Ryzen 5 3600 running on X570 platform. And also we'll be doing some comparison tests against the Noctua NHU-12S. So this is the uh, the setup as it is. So this is our pump assembly, we haven't touched that bit yet. But the fans are now mounted and we've got all this wiring coming off. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of how the, uh, how the wires separate. So there's bypass wires. So if you want to add on more fans, you can do. But essentially you've got two wires coming off each fan. So one goes off onto this extension, which then becomes your RGB connection. Again, it's got a pass through as well, so you can hook up more stuff or maybe connect up the pump, etc. And on this section, these two cables, which are the PWM, which terminate into the PWM style connector. Overall, nice and easy to do. Uh, the fans went on quite nicely. I think they look pretty decent on there. So. Radiators installed, got that in relatively easy. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the spacers, which were included, the little washers, because unfortunately, the uh, Game Max case wouldn't accept it, so I've just gone with the screws, but it's in there nice and firmly, no problems at all. And we've routed the wire in round to the back. So the next thing to do is to install the CPU pump fan header, and we've got to put this retention bracket on. And what you do is you put it in so it's slightly offset and then twist it round into position, which is uh, very common with these kind of designs. So line it up with the XPG facing as it should be, and then have your bracket slightly rotated. It should pop on the back. And once it's in place, just twist it around and it'll lock in. Unfortunately, because of the angle I'm on, I can't quite see that. So that looks about right. So that's, that's locked into position. You can tell it's locked in position. There's a little lug at the top, which you can just like see through the top. So that is it in position. So now all we need to do is to uh, put the pump actually onto the screws. So the screws are the standoffs are there already. So literally don't need to put any paste on because it's already pasted. So all we need to do is to just put this into position. Get that lined up. Move the pumps or the cables out of the way slightly. And then using these thumb screws, just get them on lightly. This is actually sometimes a little bit easier if you take out your graphics card. Just get it on so it's holding but not tightened up. And do that on all four of the pillars. And then you can start doing them up in a crisscross pattern. And if you want to, you can use a screwdriver in these as well, just to give them a little bit more extra tension. 
put that final cinch. And there we go. That is it pretty much installed. So the cabling is actually quite nice and matches in with the rest of the system. So all we need to do now is to run our cables. So the first one is going to be to the actual pump or pump header rather. And I'm going to use CPU pump two, which is at the top. And then this cable for the RGB, I'm going to run through to the back because I've got the Game Max controller in. So I can just plug that straight in. So I'm going to run that right through the back. Take that through there. And we should be able to cable manage that so it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look too bad at all. So that is how the cables are going to look. Not too bad. So I'm going to continue doing this and then we'll uh, get it fired up and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've done the installation and we've done some testing and, well, obvious thing, the notch is still on the desk. This is a pretty empty box. So that pretty much sums up things. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. But no, don't go away just yet. We have got some graphs and some charts to show you to give you an idea of how much better it did. Now, obviously this is a air cooler, although it is one of the better air coolers in the market. And this is considerably more money but does have a considerable amount of RGB. So obviously, if RGB is your thing, it's definitely worth the extra. The main takeaway from this that I can see is it does perform better and also a little bit quieter. And you've got a five year warranty, which for a water pump system is actually pretty darn good. And I don't think there's many others that actually offer the same sort of warranty. Obviously, if I'm wrong, please do correct me in the comments. I'll be glad to know if there's anyone else who does offer that kind of warranty. But let's take a look at the temperatures. Now the temperatures, as I said before, were with the Ryzen 5 3600 in my own system and basically it's just running CPU-Z stress test on the CPU. A couple of different ways with the fans on full blast, with the fans in PWM mode and also I've registered the high and low points. I haven't gone into too much depth on noise wise. To be completely honest with you, between the two under normal RPM situations, there's very, very little between them. I couldn't differentiate them at all. Although it does have to be said at the full whack, basically with the PWM turn right up to the full, the XPG is certainly louder. Now I did register the RPMs around about 2,200 RPM. So that is about right. It does say 2,000 RPM plus or minus 10%. So that pretty much puts it exactly where it is. And with that kind of brute force mentality of cooling, it only drops around about three or four degrees over what it does under PWM mode anyway. So realistically, I would say it's unlikely you're ever gonna to need to have it in full RPM mode. In PWM, it worked absolutely fine. And even under the highest lows, it was completely silent. So. That's pretty decent. So let's take a look at the graph and we'll go through some of the numbers. So first of all, on the left hand side, we've got in the blue bar, we've got our ambient temperature, which is our room temperature, which is 22.3 degrees. Next to that, we've got the red bar, which signifies the XPG Levant. And the brown bar obviously is gonna be for the Noctua. So as you can see, lower is gonna be better. And in the PWM mode, low, lowest temperatures recorded, 29 degrees C on the XPG and 32 degrees on the Noctua. Moving up to the PWM settings, so this is normal PWM settings on the motherboard and with a stress test, so the highest temperatures recorded. So we've got 65 degrees for the Noctua and a 62 degree for the XPG. Again, room temperature 22.3 degrees. Moving up to the full speed test, so these are the fans fully ramped up. Again, 22.3 degree room temperature. I'm looking at 28 degrees as the low point for the XPG and 30 degrees as the lowest point for the Noctua. With the high speed settings under full load, we're looking at 22.3 degrees again in the room with maximum temperatures reached of 53 degrees on the XPG and 61 degrees C on the Noctua. So as you can see, pretty much conclusive test. The XPG obviously is gonna be a little bit better. It is a water cooling, a lot more thermal mass, etc., etc., And well, it's more expensive. So that is gonna come into consideration. So overall, we're looking at around about a three degree difference between the Noctua NHU12S and the XPG Levant 240mm. Again, they are two very different coolers, but 
in their own respects, a 240mm AIO does always get compared with the higher end air coolers. So if you want to drop about three or four degrees and have it a lot more quiet and also have a RGB disco going on inside your PC, then this is definitely well worth a look. At the moment here in the UK, you can pick it up for around about £100. The prices I've seen have been a little bit higher as well, so it is a slightly more premium price. But again, you do get that five year warranty, so that is actually a lot of peace of mind. And if XPG have got enough confidence to put a five year warranty on it, then I think you should have it in your system. So anyway, that has been the XPG Levant 240mm AIO. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.